All right, welcome Simon here and I hope you're doing well. In this video, I'll be doing a TP-Link setup and also port forwarding step-by-step -step tutorial. Here, you can see that the brand new router, TP-Link AX1800, and this is how it looks like. Once you remove from the box, the black cable here on the far left is actually the power connection. So you plug it in into your outlet and connect to your router. All right, so this white cable here is coming from your internet service provider. If you have a Spectrum or Hawaiian Tel, any of your state that internet provider provides you that you pay monthly service for your internet has to go into the blue port. All right, so this white cable, mine is white, yours could be yellow, could be blue, any color, doesn't matter. But what you need to understand is that the blue port here is actually for the internet service provider that you're supposed to connect to. The orange port here is for your local devices, meaning that your printer, your desktop, your laptop, your TV, anything that needs the internet should be connected to the orange port here. There are only four ports and one of them, the blue color network cable here, is connected to my laptop. So I'll be using this laptop here to do the configuration, the setup process for this TP-Link router. Further down here, you can see that this is the LED light, allows you to turn on and off the LED. And the final button here at the end is the WPS for Wi-Fi. So some of the printer, you can just press the WPS and it will speed up a number for you and you just put in the number, it will just connect very easily. So that's what the WPS is for. All right, let me switch over to the laptop screen so I can show it to you on how to set it up. Here's my laptop and I'll be using the Microsoft Edge uh, browser to do the configuration. Uh, but for your case, you can use Chrome or Firefox or Microsoft Edge, doesn't matter. Any browser, just go ahead and open it up. When you open up the browser, the first thing you would like to do is on the top, the URL bar, go ahead and type in tplinkwifi.net and hit enter. It will bring you to this page, meaning the setup page for the, your new router here. You need to put in a password for the router so that the next time you can get into your control panel or the dashboard and this is the password you need to remember. So I'll be putting in my password and click let's get started. Here it asks you to select your time zone. You'll be selecting your time zone. I'll be selecting mine. Mine is Hawaii. Click next. By default, it should be dynamic IP address. You need to check with your internet service provider. Almost 99% of the time, everybody is, you'll be using the dynamic IP. Dynamic IP is an like automatic IP address. It's given by the internet service provider. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, but some commercial and some businesses, they need to have the static IP, meaning that those are dedicated for their server, or for the remote access, things like that. All right, so static IP address is not common for residential, but if you have one, you should know how to put in the static IP. If you do not know what that is, I will select dynamic IP. Almost 99% of us will be using dynamic IP. Click next, and this is the MAC address. The MAC address looks something like this. All right, and just leave it as the default. We just have to click next at this point. Here we're going to enable smart connect, wireless radio, and this is your Wi-Fi name and the Wi-Fi password. If you want to set up your own Wi-Fi name, this is the chance where you can change it out and also put in your password that you desire to have it. But for my case, I'll be using the default password and the name that is given by the router. So once you have done that, click next.
All right, so at this point, it says keep your router updated, meaning that it asks you to update. You just click next. Um, do you want to update your firmware? You should update your firmware at this point. But for my purpose that making this video here, I'll be skipping the updates. Uh, but for you, I recommend to click updates. All right, at this point, the page it says success, meaning that we have done and completed setting up the router. It's very straightforward and easy, right? Here, the TP link is asking you if you want to sign up with the cloud service. And I would just say skip for now. I don't need them. Now, this is the dashboard, or you can say the control center or the control panel area for your router. It shows you that the globe has a check mark, meaning that you have internet coming into your house. This is your router here. We do not have mesh device. And this is what is a clients. Clients means number of devices connected to the router. So I only have one laptop that is connected to the router at this point. But for your case, you may have your iPad, iPhones, Android, TVs, other devices are being connected to the router. So you should see a lot more connected clients listed in this page here. All right, so that's pretty much it. That's how you set up your TP-Link router. Uh, if you have any question, comment below. And we are moving on to the next step, which is port forwarding. All right, so for those of you who wants to do the port forwarding for your PlayStation 5, Assuming that you already set up your router, you need to go to your browser. So double click any browser that you desire. TP-Link, Wi-Fi.net. Go ahead and log in into your router. And once you're logged in on that dashboard, this control center, I'm just going to say not now. I'm not interested to update my firmware. I'm just going to close it out. At the dashboard, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you click on client and you're able to see your, um, sorry, did I say PlayStation? Xbox One. This video is for doing the Xbox. I'm, I apologize. Um, I've been doing a lot of router setup video. I may have said, PlayStation 5. I apologize if I said that, uh, but this video is for Xbox One. Okay, doing the port forwarding for Xbox One. All right, so um, at this point, you should be seeing your Xbox One device being connected to your router. Okay, that's the whole reason we do the port forwarding. If you're not seeing it, please make sure you double check the cable or make sure your Xbox is wirelessly connected or make sure your Xbox is actually turned on. Now, once you have this confirmation, I want you to click on advance at this top right little bubble here. It's a circle, click on advance, scroll down and click on net forwarding. In this net forwarding, I'd like you to click on port forwarding as well. And this is the port forwarding page and we need to click add. Now in Xbox One, in Xbox, um, there are few that you need to have UDP and TCP and there are some of them you only need to have TCP and not the UDP or vice versa. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with Xbox port 88. So Xbox port 88 is only for UDP. So the the next step we like to click on is view connected devices. Again, make sure you see your X, Xbox is listed here and make sure you match the MAC address. If you're not too sure where to find the MAC address to match, go to your Xbox, go to settings, go to network, and you should be able to see the MAC address. All right, assuming this is my Xbox, I'm gonna click on my Xbox. And the external port is 88, internal port is 88, and this is for the UDP. Port 88 is only for UDP. Click save, I'm done with that. Move on to the next port. The next port is 
3074. View connected device, select your Xbox. Here, you put in 3074. And we are selecting all. All, meaning TCP and UDP will be selected in this port, 3074. Again, we need to add another one. And this time is port 53. Click and select your Xbox. Put in 53 and we're going to leave it all. Okay. And this is port 80. Port 80 is only for TCP. So we only select TCP at this point and click save. We added the port 80. So go ahead and do port 500. Select your Xbox, put in 500, 500, and this is only required UDP. All right, so let's move on to the next. We need to add 3544. 3544, 3544, and this is only for UDP, and click Save. And the last port that we need to add is 4500. View connected devices, select the Xbox, and we're going to type in 4500, 4500, and select the UDP and click save. This is pretty much it. That's how you're going to, that's how you, you are going to add your port forwarding for your Xbox. And uh, if you have any question, comment below. If you find this video is helpful, please go ahead and click the like and subscribe. I really appreciate you for doing that. And if you're interested on where to buy the uh, router, you can go ahead and check the link in the description below. It will direct you to either Amazon um, or eBay, mostly Amazon to purchase the router. All right. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something today. Bye now.